Hi, and welcome back to our creative videos. My name is Loretta Hayes, and I'm from Hayes Sewing Machine Company in Wilmington, Delaware. And today, we are going to do the sweetest little whale uh, done by Elizabeth Hartman. He's called Preppy the Whale. Oh. I guess it could be a girl, too. Um, and so the pattern has a picnic quilt that is 75 by 75, which is basically what is showing on the front of the cover. There's a child's quilt that's 47 by 50, and a mini quilt, which is what I'm going to do today, which is 19 by 25. And so the mini quilt are going to have four whales. Uh, two of the whales are going to face to the right, and two of the whales are going to face to the left. So we're going to construct a left-facing whale. And all Elizabeth Hartman patterns are done very similarly. There's no paper piecing. Uh, and there's a very fun piecing. It is just one of those things where when you cut out, you want to mark, uh, she labels her pieces A, B, C, etc. Um, and so you want to mark those so that you have those at hand so you're not having to constantly remeasure. So we are going to start out by doing the head of the whale, which consists of the eye and the mouth unit. Um, and so we are going to go ahead and get started uh, by stitching the eye. So Pam is going to swing around. And so we are going to attach two squares. This whale is going to be kind of a, um, a beige grunge. And so we're going to stitch the eye. And we're just doing this with a quarter inch um, foot, regular seam, two and a half inch stitch length. And so we're going to sew these three units. So the two squares are going to go together. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to attach the rectangle. Um, and if you are referencing this video, um, when you are doing the um, pattern, uh, these are going to be uh, rectangle H, that's the larger rectangle, A, which is the I, and then G, which is the smaller square in the whale fabric. And so this is going to create the I unit, believe it or not. Got it. So we're going to press this, and we're going to just do standard quilting rules. So we're going to press towards the darker fabric, which is going to be the I. She's pressing. <laughs> I wasn't gonna run. I wasn't gonna run over. <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of flipping back and forth. All right, so that is going to get our first piece here. So now what we need to do is we need to create his kind of nose, his little snout. Could you point to so, that again? Sure. So this Great. this area right uh -huh. here. Okay. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a large square of the of the whale fabric and we're gonna take a small square of our background fabric. And we're gonna sew across the square diagonally. And this is a typical um, Elizabeth Hartman move. Uh, she creates really all of her shapes by taking a square, drawing a line, stitching it, and then trimming away. Um, so I've you're stitching on the line? Yes, okay. I've not really seen any Elizabeth Hartman where she cuts out triangles okay. on there. So we're gonna be stitching on the line, uh, not a quarter of an inch uh, away from the line like you would do for a half square triangle, but literally we're gonna stitch on the line. And so we're going to come in and do that. We're going to unbury and find the scissors. And we are going to trim away the corner of the piece. Then what's going to happen is this is going to flip up and get pressed. So we will press that and create that. Now, that is going to attach to that to create the the nose essentially of our whale. So now we need to come down and we need to work on our mouth. So we're going to attach two long rectangles. What letters are they? Do you know? 
they are B and C. B being the black for the mouth, C being the um, the actual whale piece. I was going to say his chin. <laughs> All right, and so once again, we're going to come in and we are going to press towards the, the darker fabric. Now, one of the things that I think is super cool about Elizabeth Hartman is she always tries to make it easy for you to do unusual shapes. So we can see that the mouth is really, really skinny. So rather than having a sew a really skinny strip, which mm -hmm. is often very difficult to do, what she has us do is she has us stitch the mouth together, and then we're going to come in and we're going to trim this piece, the, the black oh, piece, okay. down to a half an inch. So you're not working with fiddly pieces. Yes, yes. And so we're simply going to come in, we're going to just draw a line, and we're going to cut that. If I thought it out and brought a rotary mat, I could have just rotary cut it. <laughs> both work. <laughs> and so now we've taken and we've skinnied up that mouse. Um, and so it's much easier to work for. Them. Clever. All right. So we now have the three units there that are, that are going to make our whale's head uh, completed. So we are now going to join the eye unit to the nose unit. <laughs> Okay, and once again, I'm going to kind of press, get that nice and flat. And now what you'll find is the mouth unit will then attach to it. So we'll attach this, line that up. And we're still doing a standard quarter of an inch. And we'll give that a quick press. And we have our whale's head completed. All right, so our next section that we need to do is our tail section. So we're going to work this in sections. We're going to do our first section, uh, this kind of the back of the, the whale and the tail of the whale. So we're going to pick up, we're going to have a background piece and we're going to have a large square, which is going to be uh, letter J. The background piece is called letter N. And so we're going to sew down our line. We're going to trim away our outside square, our outside triangle, excuse me. And then once again, press towards the whale fabric. Then we're going to take a smaller square, which is labeled D, and we're going to attach that in the other corner. So both of the angles are going the same direction. Hold on just one second. Let me zoom in. Got it. Okay. Okay. And so we'll go ahead and sew that. And we'll trim away our outside triangle and we'll press this one into position. All right, so that's getting in here. The next thing that we're going to do 
is we're going to create our piece for the ta other side of the tail. Got so it. we've done one side of the tail here. We need to do the next side there. And so what we're going to do is we're going to come in. We're going to have a background piece and a whale piece. So the background letter is M and the... Um, I'm sorry, what, what was the letter? M as in Mary. M as in Mary, okay. Okay, and then the tail piece is E. And once again, we'll go ahead and trim. And we'll press towards the whale fabric. You sense a theme. I'm sensing a theme, yes. <laughs> okay, so we're looking like this. So there's part of our tail growing there. Uh, and then the next thing that we need to do is we're going to come in and do the bottom part of the tail. So this mm -hmm. section right here, if it helps yep. there. We're doing a left-facing whale, so... So we're going to have a rectangle, which is eye of the whale fabric, and a square of the background fabric, which is O. And I'm just giving these letters so that you can follow the pattern with the video. Um, but honestly, she gives you fabulous directions. She gives you um, lots of drawings. I rarely ever read the directions. If I can follow the dir directions via the um, the, pat the drawings, I'm all about that. All right, so we're getting our tail getting really close here. So now what we need to do is we need to put the units together for the tail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the unit that we've just made, and we're going to put the solid rectangle that's going to be the actual tail in here. So we're going to attach those two together. Give that a quick press. And now what we've got is we've got piece that's going to fit for the, the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and sew the bottom piece to it. We'll give that a press. And then we need to get the last piece of our tail oh, together, go. and it's going to attach to. And all Elizabeth Hartman patterns, she is fabulous as a pattern designer. They're all constructed the same way. So she gets you cutting out, marking your pieces, and then she creates each unit of whatever animal she's doing, in this case the whale and you simply put them together in units. All right, so now we only have one piece of whale fabric left. And that goes and in so between. And so that's gonna go in between and that's gonna create our whale. So let's get two more seams going in here. I find them really fun. Um, they're very interesting piecing. Sometimes as quilters we're doing, you know, 20 blocks of exactly the same thing. And you would be doing whales <laughs> that way if you do the big quilt. Um, however, uh, each piece is, you know, each section is interesting as you work with it. All right, let's give our whale a final press. And there is our wing.
Oh, nice. Now to finish up our little mini wall hanging, uh, we're going to take a strip of background and we're going to attach it between the two whales. So let's go ahead and stitch it to the bottom of the, of the peach whale. You can see we were very um, proper with our color choices in our whales. <laughs> I felt uh, a lot of freedom in the choice of my fabrics um, simply because of, of her <laughs> cover. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember many orange whales being yeah. out there. Yeah, so. Yours I are actually quite with, staid. <laughs> I know, they're kind of nautical kind of colors. You think about like shells and corals and that kind of thing. All right, so we've got our strip on the bottom and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna attach our whale. to that last strip. Now all quilting rules apply, even in doing a little quilt like this. And so when I held this up, my whale is just infinitesimally bigger than my strip is. So not a problem, always put the big on the bottom. The feed dogs will feed that in. We'll grab the edges here. Remember, somebody's going to be in charge. And I'd like to think it was us instead of the quilt. And so by the time we get to the end, you can see by putting that bigger piece on the bottom, they line up perfectly. And so we'll give that a press. And we are looking great. That is sharp. Now, to finish out this particular little wall hanging, what we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to attach two strips to the side. And I think it's small enough that we can do that. There's our first one. Do you want me to get you a... Oh, I think we'll be okay with the mini one here. Thank you, though. All right, and now we'll go ahead and do our second one. And typically when you're quilting, we typically put the long side on first whenever we're putting borders on. Pam's helping me, guys. She says, would you like a bigger pair of scissors? Sure, we'll have that for the last one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and press this. Oh, and I like it with the border on because now they really do look like they're swimming in the ocean. All right, so we've got the two on the side there. And then we're going to go ahead 
and we're going to attach the top and the bottom. a teachable moment you'll see this little um, seam allowance has kind of flipped over when I was stitching it that often happens in borders and sometimes when you're actually piecing blocks that happens um, I often get my beginner quilters uh, seam rippering that out to correct that so no need to do that all you're gonna do is just give it a quick little clip okay and it'll flip over and that way you'll get a nice flat press and you do want it to press flat just when you're quilting it makes it a whole lot easier oh those big scissors are so nice <laughs> all right i know how to treat one you right. <laughs> last one last border Give this a quick press. All right, and how would you like me to do it? Just, I'm just right on the mm -hmm. table there. That is know. beautiful. Isn't that sweet? And a lot of fun to do. Not any time at all involved in that. So I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time.